Hi everyone, wireless chargers like this are pretty cool. You go to bed at night, you put your phone on the charger and magically it starts charging. And that's really cool. But how about when you go outside of the house and you want to use a power bank? Well, you can plug in your cable, but that's so 2015. So I bought this new power bank from Victsing and this actually has wireless charging built in. You can still do it the old school way with cables, but it's also got wireless charging built in. Let me show you. So it looks like a normal power bank, but if I put my phone on there, watch the magic happen. Ta-da, it begins charging. How cool is that? Now you might be thinking, but wait a minute, that's an iPhone. iPhones don't even have wireless charging. Well, that's true, they don't have wireless charging, but you can buy a little adapter that adds onto the bottom and that will add wireless charging. Let me show you. So underneath my case here, you can see I've got this little adapter that plugs into the lightning port and that allows me to have wireless charging on my phone. So yes, you can add wireless charging to phones that don't actually have it built in. And as I demonstrated a minute ago, you just put your phone on top of the power bank and it starts charging within a couple of seconds. So it seems to work okay, right? But let's actually do some further testing on this and see if their claims are true. The first one is that the input takes 2 amp because many power banks say they do. Then when you connect the charger, it turns out they're only charging at 1 amp, which means it takes a very long time to charge. So let's see if it does have a true 2 amp input. And here you can see I've got my wall charger going through a watt meter to the power bank. And if I zoom in on this, you can see that it does indeed have a true 2 amp input. You can see that it's currently drawing 2 amp or around 10 and a half watts. So that's a very good start. It does have a true 2 amp input. The next thing we want to know is if we can actually draw 2 amp out of the USB port like it claims. So I've got my dummy load here, my watt meter here. Let's increase it and see what happens. Right now we're drawing 1 amp with no problem. Let's keep going higher. We're at 1.6 amp, still good. So 2.1 amp and the voltage is stable, that's good. Let's try on the other USB port just to make sure they're both equal. And there you go, 2.1 amp, 10 and a half watts. So it does indeed have a true two amp input and two amp output. So no problems there, the specs seem accurate. The next thing I want to test is whether we can draw one amp over the wireless. So I've connected one of these little adapters up with a micro USB lead into my watt meter and a dummy load. So let's try it out. So you can see the watt meter turned on, 4.94 volts, 0.88 amp. Now that's actually the maximum of this little tester here. So that's about right, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 amp. So I would say that's a true one amp over wireless charging. So that's a good start. The only thing I would say is that you can feel this thing heating up while it's charging. Now that may or may not be a big issue. It really depends how close the batteries are to the area that's getting hot because of course hot batteries die faster. So I really wanna open this up and check it out. So it actually unclipped quite nicely, so I think it will go back together without any issues. And there we go, that's what we've got. We've got the LiPo battery cell here, the charging coil here for the wireless charging, and then our circuit board here. Now one thing I want to do actually is look under this coil if we can, and see the markings on the battery to see if it is a true 7000 milliamp hour. Although it could always be written incorrectly on there anyway, but let's see if we can get this off. Okay, so I caused a little bit of damage to the little thing that was holding the coil, but look under this. 6,000 milliamp hour and this is you know marked here as a 7,000 milliamp hour so it's sold as 7,000 it's got a 6,000 milliamp hour battery in there and we don't even know if that's true it could even be smaller and they've just lied here so yeah there you go it's definitely not a true 7,000 milliamp hour battery we know that much for sure now I mentioned the heat issue earlier so what I'm going to do is connect our wireless dummy load and then see what area is actually getting hot. Is it the PCB or is it the coil that's directly attached to this battery? Let's find out. So it's been about 5 minutes, let's start by checking the temperature of this charging pad here, the one that normally connects to your cell phone because I expect to see some heat here. And there you go, you can see right in a very small hot spot, it's reaching like 74 degrees Celsius. And that's something I've noticed. This wireless charge receiver does get much hotter when using it with this power bank compared to when I use it with something like the Dodo Core here. This one doesn't make it get anywhere near as hot. Anyway, let's see what else is going on. Let's remove the charge pad. Okay, so the coil itself got a little bit warm, but not too bad, around 44, 45 degrees. You can't really feel it too much, to be honest. But most of the heat, of course, is over here on these chips, um, especially these ones around here. And what kind of temps are we hitting over here? We've got around 60 degrees Celsius, so not too bad. Um, actually, that's better than I expected. It's not too bad. The coil which is attached to the battery or stuck to the battery doesn't get very hot, so that's a big plus because you don't want the battery cells themselves getting hot. There is some heat around this area, but not too bad. In fact, let me test. 
Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. None of this under here feels too hot except for this inductor here. Um, so yeah, apart from the inductor, it doesn't seem too bad. I think its temperatures are reasonable because at least they're away from the battery. So the final test is to see the true capacity of this battery. We know it's probably not 7,000 milliamp hour since inside the battery says 6,000, but is that true? So I fully charged it and we're gonna run it through my watt meter with a one amp dummy load and see how much power we can draw out. So there you go, you can see I'm drawing one amp which is around 5.1 watts, and we'll just leave this running and see how much power we manage to draw out. Will we get close to 6,000 milliamp hour? Let's see. So the power bank has stopped outputting power after around three and a half hours, and we drew a total of 19.59 watt hours. Now, the reason why we work in watt hours instead of amp hours is because the internal battery of this is 3.7 volts, but we're pulling power out of five volts. So the most accurate way of measuring the power is via watt hours. Now, there's a simple calculator online where you can put in the 6,000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volts, and that tells us that we should expect 22.2 watt hours. Now we didn't quite get that, we got 19.5, but that is around 88%. Now you do expect around 10% losses going from the 3.7 volts to the 5 volts, and in this case we're losing around 12%, so I think it's fair to say this is a genuine 6,000 milliamp hour power bank. I don't know why they wrote 7,000 on the back, because it's quite clear that the cell inside is just 6,000, but yes, it is a genuine 6,000 at least, so it's still better than some power banks, because many of them score even worse. So if you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below, and if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.